fella still got some bounce. Not a long runway. Oh, 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 oh that is enormous. Mitch Craig. Incredible. Creek for three, some offensive firework. Xavier Cooks. Wow. Here he is again. Oh. And he flies. Hey, it's the NBL Overtime crew. Cam Luke, Corey Homicide Williams, Liam Santa Maria, and we're counting down the minutes now to the Andrew Gaze MVP Awards. No, we're all back in the same room, and we just thought we'd take a moment or two to give an idea of who we would vote and select to be the major award winners for NBL 23. We traditionally don't follow any type of rules and this is going to be no different. <laughs> we don't necessarily have to select a person who is in the last three. Mm -hmm. We're just going with whoever I want. Sixth man of the year, Liam Sandamaria. Oh, I know it's been 20... No, all right, let's get into it. We'll start, we'll start with you. You've been pushing the MVP, Matt. Who have you got for MVP? Cooks. That's it. Xavier Cooks. Done. Done. Cooks. Corey and I both said Cooks in the preseason. Now, yeah. I, I've been trying to be think, like, as the season goes on, just because you said him in preseason, are you willing to move off? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Creek's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Bryce Cotton's been terrific. And both of those guys score more than Xavier Cooks. They're the two leading scorers in the league. That triple double that Cooks had recently, uh, for me, epitomised the impact that he has. It's so, he's so versatile. He does so much for that team. The team is built around him, just like it is in South East Melbourne and just like it is in Perth with those other two guys. But Cooks has been unbelievable this season. Yeah, well, I predicted Robert Franks to win the MVP in the preseason. I'll tell you, I'm happy to move on to Xavier Cooks, who I believe has been the best player over the course of the year in the triple-double, although Mitch Creek was brilliant in that game yes. as well. Coach of the year, which way are you leaning? <sighs> to Adam Ford just over Modi Mayor for me. And I think it's, it's the way they were able to succeed despite Keanu Pinder's absence. That, that he was in the mix and that, before that because the team's been amazing all season. But losing your MVP candidate in a crucial part of the season and winning six in a row without him, what a spectacular job he's done with that team. This is the award I feel it should be co-coach of the year. Mm. They both have done a fantastic, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, man. Yeah, yeah. They Absolutely. both have done equally a fantastic job for that club, the organization. And, you know, they both were in the bottom together. So mm. it was just great to see that they were able in one season to turn this thing around, being the bottom last year. And the league's gotten tougher. Have we heard about extensions, multi-year extensions? No, either of those guys? Adam Ford's taken my advice. They're waiting until they win a championship. I'll have a crack at it because you don't want to cost yourself money. I, I believe this should be co for two reasons. Adam Ford built this roster and went and got kids and said, hey, you're going to play minutes, right? Yeah. That's how he built a little bit, slightly yeah. bit different. And Modi Moore on the back of the horrible two years. And then their disruption. You speak of the Keanu Pinder one, which is true. COVID hits. And they have to weirdly sit around for 10, two weeks, and then obviously guys missing. I, I, I don't know. Mathematically, it's probably highly unlikely that the votes will equal the same. Yeah. But I, for the first time Would I be think cool. ever in NBA over time, I'll sit on the fence. Uh, I'm going to start with Next Gen because I think Brady Manick was extremely stiff not to be in the last three. Mm -hmm. I think that Wardenberg will win it. I think the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the coaches and the, and the captains around the league have said, hey, you know what, because the rule changed, we're still going to stick with our guy. And Wardenberg has been exceptional without Keanu Pinder. But legitimately, Brady Manick had his doubters earlier in the year. But that's all based on perception and what you expect from an import. Mm. If you really want to break it down under the technicality of the award of next gen, Brady Manick should win it for mine, although we know that he will not. What do you got? Uh, I, I like everything that you just said, and I agree with Sam Wardenberg. I think in the end he'll get those votes. I would vote for Sam Frawley. Yep. I think he's taken an, another leap forward. Not a massive one, but a reasonably sized one. He's, he was, what, one of their best players over the course of the season. Now, that's a team that only won a couple of games. But I thought Sam Froling was really, really good. And he was the best, for me, of those guys. Wardenberg. I, uh, I really liked, especially when Pinda went down, mm. how he stepped his game up when Coach really needed him, as well as, well as a team. Four. So, for me, um, I'm going Wardenberg. Overall, he's had a really good campaign for a first-year player in this league. Now... We're all unanimous with the sixth man of the year? 
Come on, man. Barry Brown Jr. Yep. OK, let's move straight on because I don't think that's even in a conversation. <laughs> no. Legitimately, in all due respect to a lot of bench players and depth in the league, he's been incredible. Defensive player of the year is the one that's really fired on up. I'll let you go first because you've led this conversation in the last month. Who would you have given it to? Um, I didn't lead the conversation defensive player of the year last mm -hmm. month. But thank you, though. You were close uh, to Derek it. Pardon, man. <clears throat> he, uh, shot blocker. The way he is able to show high on those screens and hustle back. Like, he, I don't think I've watched a game with him playing where he's gotten burnt on that. Mm. Because, you know, your big man could slip easy and the point guard should be able to hit that quick or hit it to the wing to hit, to, hit your big man and hurt you for high showing. Yeah. He didn't get burnt yet from any of the games that I saw him do it. Mm. And he's done it. I mean, he's pushing guards to damn near half court. He really yeah. is. <laughs> and then hustling back. He's uh, rebounding. He's the anchor of their defense. And because of that, like, they're in the position that they're in. So, I rock with him. I love it. <laughs> I mean, and considering who the th top three vote getters are that we know of, I hope he wins it for all those reasons. He's, it's textbook. Like, just show video of what he's doing in right. that regard. And the way he's high hands as he's recovering to his... It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But I would give it to Jarrell Brantley, mm. his teammate. I mean, I think he's just... He's been everything you want in a defensive player. He's yeah. so tough and physical and versatile. Threes, four, he can guard one through five. And he does with the way they switch and the impact that he has. I think Gerald Brownlee would be that guy. I think Derek Pardon will win it. And something that I actually like about what Derek Pardon has done, hasn't got into a great deal of foul trouble over the course of the NBL season, which is something we wear when it comes to a big man who comes to this league. And occasionally, in the first year, you have to see the coach trying to scheme different ways to keep the big fella out of foul trouble. Hasn't Now, he's, he's found himself in foul trouble every now and then, but to be able to make sure that Modi Moore can do whatever he wants while him still playing the role, I think he deserves to win it. Shay Yelly, top three in voting, only playing 14 games. What do you think about that? I uh, He shouldn't be. I, I it's not enough games. I don't buy that. because Justin I, Simon has played all I, year. I agree. I so that should be his position there. I would have had Justin yeah. Simon or in McCall. it. Or even McCall. Or but, Brantley. Uh, McCall's contagious Brantley. energy on defence is a huge reason as to why Cairns win games. Yeah. The thing, this is where, this is interesting because everyone has different perception, right? So the people have sat down and said, Melbourne are so much better defensively when Shea Lee plays. Yeah. That's what they're banking their vote on, even though... He's only played the 14 or 15 games. Man That's why I think Bryce Cotton's a legitimate chance of the to game. win the MVP. 50% of the games. Uh, uh, how is he even on that list? Be because... That's how much better they the are impact. when he plays. No chance. Yeah. No I, I, chance. I see both sides no of the chance. corn, by the way. All right, let's talk about most improved. Who you got? Will McDowell White. Will McDowell White for me. Keanu Pender, man, if he wins most improved twice back-to-back, -back, first time it will ever have happened... Anywhere that I know of, certainly here in the NBL. But Will McDowell-White, the way he runs that team, he's gone from a very good player to a franchise kind of guy. This season, he's my guy. He has been great, and he's a big reason why they are where they are. But I got history being made. Keanu <laughs> Pender, listen, back-to-back, -back, most improved. The first time probably in the history of basketball, pro sport, that this has happened. I got him. I'm with you. I'm with you. I love Will McDowell White. I think he'll be all NBL second team. He's been outstanding. Mm. But Keanu Pinder went from a very good player, very good player, mm. to a guy who, without an injury, was going to maybe be the MVP of the league. To, so he's gone from a very good player, like yep. Will McDowell White was, yep. to all NBL second team. To, to like all, well, White to be be. fair, he to MVP conversation. Okay. MVP conversation. Mm -hmm. Have you got it? Well, hey, while well, we're at here then, all NBL first team. Mm. Who have you got? Now, hang on. I'll ask you just to save some time. Right. Walton, Cotton, Cooks, Creek. We all got the same four? Yes. I got those four. Okay, cool. Who's your fifth? DJ Hogue. Milton Doyle. I've got DJ Hogue. Now, I don't know if that's actually the deciding vote and if he gets it based on what we're doing here. <laughs> uh, you are not the deciding vote. <laughs> so you know. No, we're not. Hey. Sydney, we are not the deciding vote. We're just joking. Uh, DJ Hogue, just quickly. He's yeah, smooth, isn't he? yeah, so smooth. Big time for that team. We talk about Pinder to, to Jim McCall and everything, but he he can potentially sometimes slide under the radar. Mm -hmm. DJ Hogue, how massive he is. He's been enormous. Milton Doyle, you love him too, don't you? Yeah, you got five he's, seconds. He's really been he's been vital for that club from the beginning. Once he found his feet, you know he played a significant role of them potentially being top four.
Enjoy the party without me, guys. Everyone else, enjoy the Andrew Gaze MVP Awards.